So how much solar do you actually need? All of it. <laughs> no, really, as much as you can fit up there. And keep watching if you wanna know why. Today, I hope to earn your subscription or at the very least, a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. So let's get to it. I see this question all over the internet and I get asked it myself all the time, which is how much solar do we need? Uh, we wanna run our fridge, a computer, charge our phones, this or that. And there's complex answers to that, but I really think there's a simple answer. The complex answer would be uh, to figure out how much power each of those things use through what's called an energy audit. And then you divide that by the amount of solar hours you get uh, at your specific latitude uh, here in Minnesota. It's something between five and six uh, in the summer. In the winter, it's probably more like two or three, which really isn't that much, which means we need a lot of solar. Uh, but in the great state of hockey here, we have a saying called skate to where the puck is going. And most people find themselves needing to go more solar, more. Everyone always adds more solar. I don't know anybody who has taken solar off short of them changing rigs or something like that. Everyone's always looking for more. Nobody has ever said, yeah, you know what? I got just a little too much. Oh, boy, I overbought on solar. No, everyone needs more. Now you might be thinking, wow, that is gonna be expensive. Uh, because a solar, I've always heard a solar system is expensive. A solar system is expensive. Well, yes, it is expensive, uh, but it's not the solar panels. Anyone that's built one will tell you it's the batteries down there. I think that, yeah, that is my battery bay there. Uh, it's the batteries, the inverters, the solar chargers, all that stuff is the expensive stuff. The solar panels themselves aren't that bad. You can get those now for between 30 and 50 cents per watt for a commercial sized panel. And I really do recommend that size panel if you're looking for uh, solar for your RV. Okay, so I know what you might be thinking. Uh, okay, if we only need uh, five, 600 watts of solar. Uh, that's what our energy audit says. That's what our energy budget says. Why would we get 1,000, 2,000 watts? But won't that just go to waste? No, you can use it and you're gonna need it. In perfect conditions, 70 degrees, full sunshine, yes, some of that energy is gonna be going to waste. Your batteries might be full by noon, but wouldn't that be a great problem to have? So many times you get... Another benefit is you can save money. That's right, you can save money on appliances and liquid fuels. Let's start with appliances. A typical RV refrigerator is anywhere from 800 to $1,000 or more for one that will operate on 120 volt, 12 volt, and propane. Whereas a normal residential refrigerator can be had for a couple of hundred dollars or in our case, free on Craigslist. Yeah, that's right, our stainless steel refrigerator is for free. Put it in right through a window, worked great. And we took that savings of that almost a thousand dollars, that's what I had budgeted for an RV refrigerator. We put that into solar panels. That pretty much almost covered the cost of our solar panels right there. And we never have to buy propane for it. Never have to go and get it. And our refrigerators never stopped working. Get clear skies in the morning, cloudy in the afternoon. You're not going to be getting that full four to six, seven, however many sun hours you think you might be hoping to get, you might not get them. You can't count on it. You also can't count on a clear sky. Sometimes you're gonna have partly cloudy uh, or very cloudy, overcast skies, um, all sorts of things, partial shade. You, you can't control where you're gonna be camping. So uh, having more solar is always good. You're gonna be able to get your batteries to a full state of charge uh, or in a healthy state of charge, d depending on you know, lead acid or lithium, it all depends. You're gonna be able to keep your batteries healthier, longer with more solar. It just makes sense. Have I sold you on this idea yet? If so, here are some benefits. The first benefit to covering your RV with as much solar as possible is you get shade wherever you go. If like most RVs, you have vents, air conditioners, and other things on your roof, you may have to build a rack anyway. So why not cover as much of it as possible and get shade wherever you go all summer long? We already covered this a little bit before, but more power on cloudy days and imperfect conditions. Any RVer with solar will tell you that ideal conditions rarely happen. There could be clouds, haze, more recently, uh, 
smoke from wildfires. It all cuts down on the amount of solar that you can collect. Uh, right now, this summer, we have been down, I'd say anywhere 20 to 30%. Even on days that look like they are clear and blue sky, there's been a haze in the air from the wildfires. It's definitely been a challenge. So more solar would even help us, which we're definitely looking at. Another benefit is healthier batteries. If you're running lead acid batteries, it's important that they get fully charged almost every day. Uh, they can go a couple of days without getting to a full state of charge, but it does take a long time to charge them, as anyone with them will tell you. And I know we have a very large uh, lead acid battery bank. It takes forever. Uh, but even with lithium, you don't wanna run those down too low. Uh, so keeping those in a healthy range is also good. Again, no one's ever said, oh, I got too much solar. I just don't know what to do with it. I do have something you can do with it. If you do find yourself with a full state of charge and more sunshine than you know what to do with. Another benefit is you can save money. That's right, you can save money on appliances and liquid fuels. Let's start with appliances. A typical RV refrigerator is anywhere from $800 to $1,000 or more for one that will operate on 120 volt, 12 volt, and propane. Whereas a normal residential refrigerator can be had for a couple of hundred dollars or in our case, free on Craigslist. Yeah, that's right, our stainless steel refrigerator. Used for free. Put it in right through a window, worked great. And we took that savings of that almost a thousand dollars. That's what I had budgeted for an RV refrigerator. We put that into solar panels. That pretty much almost covered the cost of our solar panels right there. And we never have to buy propane for it. Never have to go and get it. And our refrigerators never stopped working. You can also save money on your liquid fuels by not having to buy as much propane for your refrigerator or even your hot water heater. Uh, as a bonus reason, when your batteries are at full state of charge, turn on your electric hot water heater and heat your water with that. And then you're essentially taking energy from the sun and storing it as hot water, skipping the batteries entirely, which is extremely efficient. Uh, it's a common thing done and uh, we've done it, works good. Okay, you're with me this far, you're still watching, uh, but won't solar charge controllers, batteries, inverters cost way more now that I've got a, I'm looking at doing a 2000 or plus watts of solar on my roof? They don't have to, uh, and I'll tell you why. I'm most familiar with Victron equipment, so I'm gonna use those as examples here. Uh, say you get a Victron Multi Plus for $1,200 to $1,300 these days on Amazon, you get one 100 volt 50 amp solar charge controller for $325 on Amazon, you can get a uh, Victron battery monitor for $130 on, also on Amazon, uh, you don't have to look too far. Uh, batteries, this might be your biggest single expense depending on what you want to do could spend $1,000 to $3,000. It really depends on what you want to do. Uh, you could even spend less if you do lead acid. You, you can do golf cart batteries. No, no judgment there. Uh, that's where we started. Then with solar panels, you could spend $700 to $1,400 or so for 1,400 to 2,800 watts of solar. It really all depends on what you want to do and how much you want to put up there. But like I've said, I don't know anyone who's taken them off and said we've had too much. Uh, if that's you, seriously, comment. I want to know your story. Uh, the biggest concern people might have is having too big of a solar array and too small of a charge controller. Uh, generally, that's not really an issue if you have a good quality solar charge controller, though. Charge controllers are limited by two things. One, open circuit volts, which you never want to go over. Uh, mine are currently at 100 volts. Uh, you can get 150 volts. It all depends on how many solar panels you want to string together. Uh, and then the other one is amps, charging amps. For the most part, you can put as much solar connected to a single charge controller as you want. You're just going to be limited by how many amps it can pull out and actually put into your batteries. The same thing happens when your batteries are at a full state of charge and are only pulling two or three amps out of that 50. Uh, the charger is derating itself. Um, and this is often called in the, in, in the industry over paneling. Uh, so, in those ideal conditions, yes, you're gonna be losing some capacity. But again, solar panels were the cheapest part of your solar system. Uh, you're missing out on uh, the high peak of a great day, but on cloudy days, 
you might be pulling in the same amount of power as I am with our two charge controllers and your one. Now for us, um, we started with six solar panels at 325 watts each and we started with a, only a single charge controller. We eventually added two because I wanted to take advantage of that higher peak when we did have those good perfect days. I wanted as much as I can. But what I'm finding is more often than not, I'm not even using the full capacity of my charge controllers just because we don't get perfect conditions all that often. So I'm looking at actually even adding more solar to ours. And that's what in part got me thinking about, hey, I should do this video. So that about wraps it up. Um, I can't think any more ways to ramble on in different areas. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully I earned it. Uh, if I really did a good job, you can go ahead and give me a subscribe. That'd be great. So until next time, we will see you later, maybe out on the road, who knows?